Hi, Caroline Carney here at Palian Arts, and I'm standing with Nathan Rutkowski in front of his terrific piece that will be in our jury show from now through May 14th. Nathan, can you introduce us to your piece? Oh, sure. Um, this, the title of the piece is Ionian Sea. Um, it's in line with uh, the work that I've been doing uh, for five, ten years now, where I'm uh, playing with mark making, uh, abstract mark automatist, uh, mark making, random. Um, and then that kind of suggests different forms. Um, this was started on top of a beach scene that I had painted uh, in watercolor previously, but I didn't feel as though it came out. And it has been sitting laying around for a while. And then um, I thought I could do something with it and uh, integrate it into my current style. And uh, it was also inspired by the television show White Lotus, uh, where um, this most recent series they shot off the coast of Italy, and um, it kind of inspired like the the color. The intensity of the color and the intensity of the you know scene. So and um, it uses the uh, trash materials uh, as like collage elements to kind of break up the surface. Um, so you have intense color uh, as like a push pull situation where you, know, you go in and then go out, and then the the um, relief type uh, objects that are in here. These these bags are kind of part of that texture, part of that push pull situation. So um, that's essentially what uh, this work is about. Well, and you, um, we like um, you work with layering very intently, and it's something that um, I really admire in your piece. We talk a lot, like in previous videos, yes. about the I'm going to have trouble saying this word autonomism of your work, but we don't really haven't really I think delved into how you think about layering. You talked about how you put in like this is all over top of watercolor, right. but I'm curious because your pieces. You use a lot of different, like even if you're using similar materials, yeah. you use each layer in a different way. Yeah. How does that process work? Are you working with them simultaneously? Do you do one and then the other? I generally do one and then the other. Um, I feel like, um, so I I have a kind of sketchy approach, or you know, a, I work all over all at once, so I work quickly. Um, and a lot of artists do that, but then they'll they'll refine it and make it more detailed. And whereas um, I prefer to have multiple starts, and um, that that activity of the multiple starts is just more in tune with my personality, and I just um, to me it makes it for more subtle. Instead mm -hmm. of making sort of instead, instead of refining the edges, the it, the way I refine is by is by restarting and restarting and restarting. Well, it sounds like you're curating. Yeah, and that's Correct. what I was gonna say. Right. And, yeah. I, and I work all over. I don't I don't I don't um, just get bogged down in a corner, which is fine. But that's not the way I think about making it. But you're also, like, a, um, my mom has obviously, Carol has obviously known you for a very long time, right. and I've gotten to know you over the last year or so. Right. And uh, you're a very intentional, conscientious person. And so yeah. to me, that makes Thank a you. lot of sense yeah. because you're thinking about them holistically, which is, is really interesting to me. I also just want to point out that I love that you're putting plastic on the sea. Yeah. I just generally I love yeah. the way that you're integrating yeah. like yeah. the materiality like yeah. because in some of your other pieces, especially the cardboard, the texture really yes. um brings out elements of the piece. And the the collage uh plastic brings out elements of the piece Thank here you. too, because sometimes it looks a little bit like rocks, sometimes yeah. it looks like clouds. Right. Uh but it's also funny to me because yeah. the sea has a giant plastic garbage yeah, island right. and this yes. is a seascape yeah. with plastic in it. That's right. <laughs> yeah. But um but it has such great energy. I really like how um, there have to be like five to ten different colors of blue on here. Yeah. Um, and it's a fairly muted, like a fairly mm -hmm. limited palette mm -hmm. in terms of red and blue and white are very um, prominent in this. Yeah. But there's lots of different variations of that. How do you think about that in terms of palette? Do you think of that in terms of palette? Um, I, I do. Um, it, you know, color interaction uh, is, is big. With me, um, but taking a you know variance on a color on a single color, and then um, a color that harmonizes with that, and um, playing that against one another um, is is a big part of my thinking when I whenever I do a piece. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Well, I also when I'm looking at this, um, notice that from a distance, like from where I am, it's like I'm approaching something, and Either I'm looking through a bunch of branches and mm -hmm. other collected mm -hmm. stuff, kind of like what you find on the shore, mm -hmm. or um, 
it almost becomes a cubist composition yeah. of the sea. Yeah. So I'm not sure if it's that the surface has been cracked yeah. and these are coming up, or I am looking at something representational that's broken up. Well, that's or, interesting, yeah. And the other thing is, is I also think of them as, because there's usually wind and such at this, like as you approach the sea, it also could be a diagram of how the wind is coming yeah. across and breaking things up. Mm -hmm. um, I like that that area of interpretation that you allow, which I'm assuming is intentional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, multiple interpretations are fine, and um, you know, definitely uh, cubist space is definitely something I think about. You know, multiple viewpoints of the space, multiple. Um, you know, it's kind of an all over composition um, mm -hmm. where I've worked it all over, and it's you know, club tails with that. You, you've worked it all over, but uh, similar to Pollock, yeah. um, you also have on the paper itself framed it at least on three sides, yeah. which goes and even as the in, yeah. Right. It creates a, an entry point. I also am noticing something here that I haven't noticed in some of your other pieces. This almost looks like you're starting to scrape at different points in the white. Are, yeah. Have you started integrating that? Uh, I did. I try and uh, do like scruffito, um, like, you know, gouging into it um, on some of my other cardboard. It's hard to see sometimes, but um, yeah. I do. I do echo like the rhythm of the brush. I'll echo with a knife on the on the surface of the cardboard and carve into it and carve into the pa paper. So there's other paper pieces where I've gone over it with a knife just to kind of break up the surface. Um, well, kind of, you know. That leads me to another question because we, uh, Nate has a second piece in here. And I would bring show. it to you, but it's large and it's beautiful. So and it, it's a lot it's of going to be a surprise. Good. Yes, it's wonderful. Um, but uh, you. I've seen your work that's on cardboard yeah. and um, even the way that you allow your edges from the cardboard just to stay. Yeah. These are both formatted in a rectangle right. um, as well as this surface is different than obviously the corrugated cardboard. Yeah. So how do you feel about working on each of them? Is, is there a different way of working or? Um, I, it, I apply the same way of working to both uh, materials, uh, the works on paper, um, they're more, uh, you know, probably traditional, um, and, you know, uh, precious, but, um, it, it's, they kind of go hand in hand, um, where I'm working with irregular edged, uh, imagery, it, uh, like I said, it echoes in the works on paper. Um, and we have to pay attention to the edges yeah, in yeah, either yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. It's something I think about all the time is the, is the edges, the limit, the limits of the rectangle. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I think has been really fascinating for us is to see how the sketching evolves into, because yeah. in the first story show, um, Nate had uh, a, a black beautiful drawing. black and white uh, drawing that he had worked through. And then we've gotten to see a similar style, but on cardboard and how yeah. that manifests and uh, integrating the plastic bags and things, which is really, uh, I'm just going to be selfish right now, satisfying for me personally, because it's interesting to see how your body of work evolves, yes. uh, which is why you should delve into some of these previous things that Nate has talked about, because it's really fascinating because it gets gives you an insight into how artists develop a process. Like, yep. So uh, I have really enjoyed that. Thank you. And I hope that you will come to Palais Arts to see Nate's beautiful work. Uh, a beautiful is a good word, but not a great word. <laughs> they are dynamic, they are interesting, and they are energe energetic. They have an intuitive, visceral energy that you really should come see at Palais Arts from now through May 14th in the Jury Show.